Sometimes you get a great print that even though the detail is there and the supports worked, you can just see that, hey, this needs a little bit more filing. And when you start to sand it and file it, you realize, man, there's some areas that I just can't get to or some areas that are still looking a little bit rough. And so you need a little bit of extra help to get it smoother. And in this video, I'm going to show you a quick tip to help get that rough surface smoother before and after priming. Let's do it. Hi everyone, Danny the 3D Printing DM here. Welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things related to 3D printing for your tabletop games. I've been seeing so many people uh, printing minis and that's got me really excited and really happy. And one of the things that I've heard a lot of people say is, Danny, you know, I'm almost there. Like I, I've got, I've seen so much improvement, but my prints just aren't quite there yet. And so I'm making this video because I have a lot of prints that aren't quite there yet either. And I don't think that it requires that much post-processing to get them there once you remove those supports, which I showed you in last week's video. But there's one little additional cheat that I use for a lot of different prints that is a, is like a finishing hack, if you will. It takes me not even a minute of time and combined with that sanding and filing and support move that I showed you, I think can get you some really great results. The tip to smoothing out rougher prints is polyurethane. I am using this kind which is a Minwax polyacrylic, but it doesn't really matter what kind of polyurethane you use in my opinion. It just matters that it's poly. Polyurethane is thin enough to fall into the cracks, so it doesn't obscure as many details, but it sticks to rough surfaces and it helps make smoother areas so that the zits and the rougher parts just aren't as noticeable. Some folks use epoxy or different kinds of varnishes, and it's pretty much the same principle. I like polyurethane because it's pretty common and if you've done any type of woodworking projects, you probably have it laying around. And uh, if you don't have it laying around, it's pretty cheap. It's like, cost me maybe eight bucks for this and this will last me forever. The only reason I ran out was because I used it for woodworking projects all the time. So there's that. So you apply the poly after you've removed all the supports and you've done the very bare sanding and filing. Uh, if there's a big chunk sticking out, it's not going to cover that big chunk. So just try to remove as much as you can and use that initial sanding and filing to get those big chunks and get your surface as smooth as possible. This is for those rough areas that you can't cut and you're struggling to sand down or you want to get them to have a smooth transition. So you're going to use a really thin brush and you're going to coat those rough areas and you're going to want to make sure to spread the poly out. Okay, because poly will pool and it's going to fill those gaps in the holes and you need every ounce of detail if you're printing on an FDM printer. So you have to stick the brush in and you have to spread that poly that you pick up out of the hole and spread it elsewhere on the model. And you got to make sure to use as thin a coat as possible because if you are too thick, you will lose detail. So we don't want that. <laughs> now, once the poly dries, I prime it and this lets me know if I need to do any more final sanding, which I am choosing to do because I want a smooth surface for the sake of this video. Lots of times I've skipped this and I'm just okay with it being a little bit rough. And the way I sand is I use, I wrap a piece of sandpaper around a skewer and then I use the angle at the top to sand it down gently so I can kind of slip in there. And the primer will make it easier to sand and prep the surface for paint than the naked PLA. So that's why I do that at this point. Now you don't want to use filler primer on your minis because it is too good and it's going to fill in those cracks and those details that you're hard pressed for anyways. So my recommendation is not to use filler primer if you don't have to. I use uh, Rust-Oleum Gray 2X. I can get it pretty cheap at Walmart, like three, four bucks. Amazon is a little bit more expensive, but if you don't want to make the trip to Walmart, of course, Amazon has it too. I like a lot because it's just the right balance of coverage without obscuring any detail. Now, even if your prints aren't coming out optimally, I found that this still helped me soften the edges when I got lazy and didn't do as much sanding or filing. At the end of the day though, this really helps for those really nice polished finishes so that you don't have to spend a lot of time doing that and this really will take less than a minute to do. You can also use poly on bigger prints and terrain, for example, like I did with the forest trees in my forest trees video. But again, it isn't a cure-all. 
and it's not gonna fill big gaps and it's not gonna remove big chunks. So it's uh, much better for those small fixes and softening the small detail, the, some of the rougher details on your minis. And again, I recommend it for minis more than anything. So that's it everyone. I, I hope this helps you get smoother finishes on your FDM minis. If you use your own kind of smoothing agent, please share it with us, let us know. Uh, put it in the comments and I'm sure others would love to see it and try it for themselves too. Uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. If you enjoy these types of video, please subscribe. I'd love to have you here more often. Happy printing and happy gaming.